lovers of Easton. I'm Madeline Neely Holt, Assistant Director at the Ames Free Library, and I'm just delighted to be here with you tonight. We come to you each Monday discussing books and authors, and uh, our guests are usually people from the community uh, who enjoy a particular author um, or uh, have written something. We've had a couple of authors recently. But today we have uh, Gloria Freitas, who is going to talk with you about the Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver, mm -hmm. which is one of the most wonderful books. It and is. we're it going is. to hear a lot more about mm -hmm. it. But before we talk about the book, I wanted to thank you, Gloria, for coming mm -hmm. and uh, share with the audience the fact that we are kind of library friends. Mm -hmm. I have a few people that I see regularly, and we mm -hmm. chat about what are you reading and right, what are you right. doing and yeah. share. Uh, titles mm -hmm. that we think we might like and mm -hmm. we have similar tastes. I first met you when you installed the um, a garden scene that you had submitted oh, to the Boston my, Flower my miniature Show. miniature landscape. Miniature mm -hmm. landscape. That was quite a while ago. Actually, I'm, I'm preparing another one for the next flower show okay. um, in Boston. Mm -hmm. and um, But I do enjoy uh, flower arranging, gardening, and everything that goes with it. <clears throat> in fact, this morning I was uh, judging a flower show in Barnstable. And uh, which is quite different from what I'm going to be doing We're right now, and I'm not <laughs> as comfortable. <laughs> if I was, if I was, if I had uh, a flower in my hand, I'd feel a lot better. <laughs> well, and um, the fact that you uh, mentioned judging a flower show in Barnstable, I think I need to mention to the viewers who are probably watching this in the middle of the winter, right? <laughs> that we are said you have just judged a flower show, and today is one of the hottest days it of is. the oh, year. You have <laughs> no idea, and it was in a tent. Well, yeah. anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> Tell us about um, Barbara King Solver's The Poisonwood Bible, and well, do you feel comfortable? I, mm -hmm. I have to keep telling everybody that if you like something, uh, you can sit and talk with me okay. about it, and you don't have to feel nervous. Wonderful. Well, you did ask me um, uh, what book I would like to read, uh, talk about, and uh, my favorite book is The Poisonwood Bible, simply because it's a page turner. It's um, it's. It's, uh, it, well, you never know what's going to happen next. You know that something disastrous is going to happen and you're waiting for it to happen. And it's, um, it's really a wonderful book. I, 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 it's hard to describe. Um, it's also historically correct. It, it talks about uh, what was going on in Africa in, in that time during Eisenhower's reign. And, um, but the story is wonderful. It's uh, about a uh, family, um, a, a, a zealot, a, a religious zealot, that decided he would take his wife and three daughters, four daughters, to Africa, the deep um, uh, jungle of uh, the Congo, and uh, convert the uh, natives. Uh, he was a Baptist minister. Uh, we find out uh, later in the book that it was not sanctioned by the uh, church. Uh, they were very happy to see him go, apparently. That's how. They, they wanted to get rid of him because he was too much of oh. a zealot. So you can imagine him going into the deep Congo. And the first thing that bothered him, of course, was the bare-breasted women. And he immediately wanted to have a church service. And he looked down and saw the bare-breasted women. And he went into a harangue about that. So I mean, it, it just goes on and on about that. But the, oh, the horrors of the jungle and yet the beauty of the jungle. Uh, the, the, there's a quote about the um, the fragipani flowers <clears throat> that the tropics will intoxicate you with the sweetness of frangipani flowers and lay you down with a sting of a viper, it, which is just what it was like. I mean, it was just beauty and horror, and it was just a wonderful story. And um, there's a darkness about it. Yes. you feel like you're drawn into the deepest, darkest Africa with the anecdotes right. that she brings in. And I yeah. think of the fact that they, uh, there was no uh, means of travel into that particular uh, part of the Congo. They had to be flown in uh, on a very tiny little plane. And they were not allowed to bring many things with them. And the four daughters were allowed to stuff things under their clothes. And one of the daughters being a teenager, just, uh, she'll be t she was going to be turning 16 in the jungle. And uh, oh, she brought her mirror and her bubblegum pink nail polish and 
uh, she arrived in her uh, lime green Easter linen suit, you know, with her little <laughs> white pumps and, oh, you know, it's, it's just going to be a complete disaster. And she's a platinum blonde with blue eyes. And of course, it turns out that they were the ones that were stared at in the Congo. And, you know, it was the reverse. So it was really quite, it's really a wonderful you, book. We have to set it back in time, I think. As you were talking about this, I'm thinking, what mother and father in their right mind would bring their children to Africa and not prepare them with proper clothes? And I guess in 1959 or so, right. um, we were, we, the white world, were the uh, people who were supposedly the dressing correctly, and uh, right. we were going to con convert the uh, Africans. And this. Um, Today, it wouldn't be that way. I mean, we would no, have our no. safari clothes on. Right, exactly. <laughs> no. And of course, the wife Not that was we might be, be any more perceptive about what we're going to find over there, but... Right, and I think she, the mother uh, was a, a type of mother that loved her children and was obedient to her, to her husband. To her husband. And yeah. uh, thought that that was all that was necessary and sort of went along with everything that um, he uh, wanted them to do, which is, it was just wonderful. Anyway, I'm trying to think here. <coughs> so there are different characters. For instance, one of the characters in, in the Congo had no legs, uh, a mother, and, and nobody bats their eye when she scoots by on her hands and goes on down to her field or the river to wash clothes with the other ladies that work down there every day. She carries all her things in a basket on top of her head. It's as big as Mama's big white laundry hamper back home and seems like she's always got about 1,100 things piled up in there. When she scoots down the road, not one of them falls out. All the other ladies have big baskets on their heads too, so nobody stares at Mama Mwanza one way or another. And one of the uh, children of the um, the family <coughs> that uh, of the of the minister uh, was deformed. She was a twin, mm -hmm. and um, in Georgia she was stared at, whereas in the Congo she was just one of them. And because there were so many, with just a stump for a hand, deformities, or, yeah. yeah, with all yeah. the deformities and so forth. So. It wasn't one of the daughters quite blonde? Yes, and yes. in fact, uh, they were, would uh, grab her hair thinking that it would, they could take a piece of it or something. They were just so amazed at it. Yeah, she had white eyelashes. White and eyelashes and was blue eyes. She, um, the, the characters of each child it was so uh, different. And they were, um, it, the book itself is narrated by each child, uh, the, each chapter. and. Um, the one is, uh, for instance, the blonde, the oldest, the 16-year-old, was extremely um, selfish, a typical teenager, and um, and and then there was Leah, who loved her father. She was one of the twins, loved her father, um, thought he was wonderful, and always wanted to do what was right. And of course, halfway through the book, she realizes that he's insane. Uh, but it was such a rude awakening for her. And, um, and then the deformed twin. And then there was Ruth May, who was the very youngest. And she um, eventually is killed by a snake. And oh, it was just unbelievable. But that's when the mother leaves the uh, jungle uh, with her children, with no way of getting out, leaves her husband. But that's after so many horrible things happen. Mm. I think this book um, is a tough book to read from a woman's point of view or a mother. I, I think, uh, and also fascinating for a mother to read because it's about a mother who succumbs to the will of her husband mm. at the peril, peril of her children. I mean, right. her, she really can't protect herself or her children. Mm. She is just um, a pawn in this she is. drama she, she, here she was, that, that yeah. goes on. and. Um, I remember her as one of the key characters, and I remember before I read this book, 
speaking with women who said they found it difficult because it's so emotional yeah. Yeah. about what happens to each of these children. And, and you, you get irritated with her because you wonder why didn't she right. leave the jungle earlier before all the disastrous things happened. Right. But I don't know, um, it, I think being a Southern obedient wife and coming off of a farm and so forth and having no education that um, she felt it was her duty to uh, be um, obedient to her husband. And she did wonder why she couldn't s step in front of her husband whenever he was punishing them. And he was, he was quite strong. Oh, terrible. Um, I'm trying to think of, uh, there's a character in Hawaii that I you know, somehow just came into my mind, a, a minister also. This is from the way back in the James Michener, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I believe there was a minister character there who had no understanding of the natives. And I mean, this man really didn't understand anything about the people he, about he went to serve. He just had this so-called relationship with uh, his God, and he oh. had no understanding of what he was exactly. telling yeah. them. Um, I'm going to pick up this review here that we've both <coughs> been looking at. Um, it cites what he says to them, that is, he pronounces something incorrectly. Yes, that's where the title of the book comes from. Um, Jesus is uh, Bangala. Bangala. Which means poison wood. Which, which can mean, uh, mean poison. Which way. can mean poison. Yes. It says pronounced one way, it means precious, but pronounced as her father says it, Jesus' bangala, means poison wood. The Lord will make you itch. <laughs> and they so, just couldn't figure that one out. The natives, they were just amazed at that. They were amazed and, and they wouldn't go into the river. Tell, do you remember well, the story yes. about he was, he he was, was trying determined, to Well, yes, he was determined to baptize the uh, natives and um, he just couldn't understand why they didn't want to go anywhere near the river. It, it turns out that one of them was eaten by a, an alligator. <laughs> and there was no way they were going to be baptized in the river. Well, he just kept right on, you know, insisting. And, and, and even towards the end, when his youngest daughter was uh, killed by this, uh, the green mambo snake, all he could say was, and she wasn't baptized. Yeah. And that's the only thing that bothered him. And, Why wasn't uh, his daughter baptized? Uh, he was waiting to make her an example uh, with the natives. He wanted her to be in the river with the natives being baptized at the same time. So until he could get the natives to go in there. But one of the um, little things that he did was so ridiculous. Like he brought green beans um, see, uh, to plant, green beans in the jungle. And you, you just don't grow <laughs> green beans. <laughs> And he just couldn't understand why they weren't growing, and the natives tried to tell him, and he just insisted on. And of course, they, you know, they just died. He tried uh, so many things that were so ridiculous that um, eventually the natives lost uh, faith in him. And then, of course, the tragic things: um, the uh, the ants, uh, the march of the ants that drove them into the river. The whole. Uh, community in, into the river because they eat anything in its path. It was uh, um, tragic uh, and all, all sorts of uh, it's tragic things that go on. But it's, it had a lot of humor in it too, which I loved, and which is quite a relief. And um, but Speaking, um, I, I think some of the humor comes because the stories are being told by children. Yes. Um, children have a different way of looking oh, they at did. things. All four yeah. of them did. Yeah. And it, it they was, each of them quite different. And, and you yeah. love them all. Um, yeah. The, the oldest, well, you were a little irritated with her. She was very selfish. But uh, the book itself is, is wonderful and it's realistic because Barbara um, Kring Salvert apparently spent two years uh, in the Congo with her um, parents. And that's where she really. Uh, learned about the ways and uh, how different uh, they, she lived in Kentucky at the time and she felt that uh, that's the way the world was and when she moved to the Congo she realized how different everything yeah. is. Yeah. <coughs> and then she must have done a prodigious amount of research for this book too. I mean yes. it, it's, it's her own commitment to 
um, exploring the way the uh, white world um, exploits and misunderstands mm -hmm. uh, the African nation. Mm -hmm. And it's also her, um, I guess, her commitment to exposing poverty and um, the use of natural resources the way, uh, at least in, certainly at that time, mm -hmm. people were taking diamonds out of there and yes. people were dying. and. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a social commentary. It's a family it, saga. Yes. It's it's history. So um, right. It's five hundred pages long. Right. I mean, for people, say a little bit about. Well, you said it was a page turner. So oh, it really is. You it never really found is. it uh, hard to oh, read. No, or in fact, I I, I read I it, it twice. Yeah. In fact, if if um, all these uh, if you're going <laughs> if you're going on a trip, and um, listening to the tapes is even better, because each child has a different voice and you can just see them and get to know them even more so. I think that's a good example yeah. of a book that might be, it might be very helpful yes. to, to yeah. listen to. On you have tapes. someone dramatize really the yeah. different parts. Mm -hmm. What about the father? He must uh, oh. be interesting. <laughs> he really is. And of course, um, one of the daughters does marry uh, a native and um, has four, four children, four sons. And the book ends with uh, Oleander, the uh, wife. Um, she is a grandmother and uh, loves her uh, grandsons and so forth. And um, it turns out all right in the end. Of course, the uh, the zealot uh, father um, perishes. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> well, um, but, um, and the daughter who was was lame. Um, she was a twin. Yes. I think there's a, quite an interesting quote about how she was the not so perfect twin. Um, but she becomes a biologist. Yes, is that and not true? only does she become a biologist, but they, they, uh, she had an operation that straightened out her uh, deformity. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then she became, um, after becoming a biologist, I think she was sort of a witch doctor, which she, she called herself a witch doctor. And apparently, but this is back in the United States. Yes, she yes. became a right. they an all, herbalist, um, I guess we'd call it yes. today. <laughs> Actually, um, the mother only returns with one child. One was killed. Um, that uh, blonde teenager becomes. Um, she owns not a brothel, but it might just as well be one in Africa, and um, a very successful one. And she makes tons of money and is as happy as can be with her nail polish and everything else. Marries so she never three really changes. She never changes. <laughs> she never changes. Whereas the uh, twin, Leah, um, does marry the uh, Anatole and they have the four sons and they live almost like the natives do and he is uh, becomes politically active in the story. So it, it has so many different aspects to the uh, I think if you um, if you travel in Europe uh, or in, in <laughs> Africa and anywhere, you meet a lot of uh, expatriates and you hear a lot of stories mm -hmm. about yeah. what people do and, and they end up living in the country. That story about the sister becoming a kind of a madam reminds right. me of expatriate life. Um, the one who married um, Anatole, um, who was was a teacher? He was a yes, teacher there. Yes, he was a there. teacher. Um, in her, in her father's uh, Bible school, and he would be the interpreter. Okay. Uh, he would rant and rave, and then he would, in a very calm voice, interpret. But um, it, it's sort of indicated here in the in the book that he was interpreting his own words. <laughs> and so <laughs> he, uh, I remember he, that he yeah. never knew <laughs> that he was not being interpreted correctly. But um, there's a little quote here about the four African sons about the future. Um, it says um, the, that so in the future there there will be the four African sons of Leah and Anatole, the colors of silt, loam, mm. dust, and clay, an infinite palette for children of their own, suggesting to their mother that time erases whiteness altogether. It does yeah. That's a, mm -hmm. a vision of yeah. the future yeah. there. Right. But um, going back to the uh, children that they meet <coughs> when they arrive, uh, one of them was named Pascal. And he's always more interested in poking through the flour sacks that they brought. And he sometimes takes small handfuls of carnation milk powder. And uh, I find that substance revolting 
yet he eats it eagerly as if it were candy. <laughs> and then it, in exchange for his first taste of powdered milk, Pascal showed me a tree where we could climb to find a bird's nest. After we handled and examined the pink-skinned baby birds, he popped one of them in his mouth like a, like a candy. <laughs> it seemed to please him a lot. He offered a baby bird to me, pantomiming that I should eat it. I understood perfectly well what he meant, but I refused. He did not seem disappointed to have, have to eat the whole brood himself. <laughs> well, you know, in, in defense of the uh, family, these are strong images to have to, uh, you know, learn oh, yeah. about right. how, how they lived. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you always hear about eating bugs and, yes, uh, yeah. I, I don't know now the I older could do that myself. <laughs> <right. no. laughs> the older one, again, the, the spoiled uh, teenager, uh, the chief of the village who had, I think, five or six wives, he decided that she looked so thin that he would do them a favor and marry her. Well, <laughs> you can imagine the mother. <laughs> marry, marry her. her. <laughs> and so she was able to get out of that. Yeah, how did they get out of that situation? Well, uh, <clears throat> there was a pilot um, who was, um, he was um, stealing diamonds and transporting them out of the Congo. And he would fly in with magazines for them, or, or things that they needed. And he had his eye on her. And he was a disreputable character. And she couldn't stand them, but she figured if she hooked up with him, she could get out of there. That's how she actually ended up with him. And she's the one who eventually stayed in Africa yes. and became the uh, yeah. madam of... Yeah, uh, right, yeah. exactly. Well, I guess she she had to get away, and yeah. this was the way she saw that she could get she away. She could get away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, as we were saying, the book has uh, so much to it, we can, we can hardly um, even talk about the plot without thinking about mm -hmm. all the different places yeah, it goes. Yeah. I wonder if you had any other um, well, quotes the, that you wanted to well, read. Well, I, I, my second favorite book was Undaunted Courage, which is <laughs> quite a mm -hmm. difference. Um, you know, it was about the Lewis and Clark expedition. Yeah. Too. And that was fabulous. Did you read that? I didn't read that oh, one, no. Wonderful. Someday I will do that. That was wonderful. But before we leave yeah. King Solver, I just, right. I just wanted to um, make sure that people um, who haven't read this book might consider it. Um, there is a quote here um, by this book reviewer who happens to be John Leonard, Leonard of The Nation magazine who says, in case I haven't made myself clear what we have here with this new, mature, angry, heartbroken, expansive, out of Africa king solver is at last our very own Lessing and our own Gordimer and she is, as one of her own characters said of another in an earlier novel, beautiful beyond the speed of light. Mm. So he's comparing her to um, Nobel Prize winners mm. and National Absolutely. Book Award winners. And um, her other books are fabulous. Yeah, she has a long list. Uh, I did want to mention that she also supports uh, Literature of Social Change mm -hmm. Prize. It's called the Bellwether Prize. and. Uh, Several authors have won $25,000 that she has Amazing. committed of her own money. And um, uh, it's called the literature, a support for a literature of social change. And mm -hmm. um, just from her point of view, she says, uh, fiction has a unique capacity to bring difficult issues to a broad readership on a personal level, mm -hmm. creating empathy in a reader's heart for the theoretical stranger. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what you learn in yes, the Poisonwood Bible. The, yep. the um, see, there was something similar to that. You, you tend to <coughs> know and understand the Africans more than you ever would unless mm. you lived there, I suppose. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I did want to um, make sure we mentioned that, first of all, that she has a lot of other books that are yes. a little lighter. Yep. Um, the Bean Tree, the that bean was her tree. first book. Um, Prodigal Summer is uh, uh, the one that came after this. It's about um, nature, a lot mm -hmm. of things about yeah. nature. And uh, she's she, a wonderful writer. Yeah, and diverse too. Most I mean, people they're all different. Her. And but you were about to talk about Stephen Ambrose oh, yeah, too, Stephen because Ambrose. I wanted to and that, uh, that I make love sure too. we that 
Lewis and Clark. Um, yeah, and then uh, the other books that I absolutely love was Prince of Tides, which is very similar to this, with a very cruel father. Um, Prince of Tides by uh, Conroy. Uh, yes, Conroy. Conroy. And of course, The Secret Life of Bees, which everybody has been write, uh, reading. But you know, if, if it's a really good book, if it's well written, uh, I'll read it. But if someone says to me, you really, uh, I'm reading such and such a book, and I'll say, well, is it a really good book? Well, it's okay. And I says, I don't have any time for an okay book. For an okay <laughs> book. <laughs> it has to be really, really good. <laughs> Well, and the that ones you good. mentioned are quite good. The yeah. Secret Life of Bees right. is uh, a real favorite, and the, the new, uh, the Mermaid's Chair is uh, Sue Monk Kid's second book. And oh, really? There are about five hundred holes oh. on that in the library. Oh, so wow! I have to remember might, that. Might be Mermaid's what? The Mermaid's Chair. Oh, okay. The Mermaid's Chair. See now on. Have a new book. Crow Lake was wonderful. Yes, we read that in one of our book clubs. Uh, uh, I like that quite a lot. And there is one book that I. Absolutely loved, but not many people do. Confederacy of Dunces, which won a Pulitzer Prize. Say a little more about well, that. Well, um, it was written. Uh, uh, it starts out in the preface where uh, the the author says a mother came into my office with a with a manuscript, and she s told me that was her son's manuscript, and um, would would I read it? And he didn't really want to read it because here's a mother with her child's manuscript, how good could it be? Well, he did start a reading and he couldn't put it down. And then it did win the Pulitzer Prize. But it was written by her son who committed suicide. And uh, it has so much humor in it. And it is so unusual. It's bizarre. And um, But there aren't too many people that that know the book? I think that it's a cult. I, it's a I cult think, book. I think it's a cult book. It's, it's cult been around book. since the 60s. Yes, the 60s. Um, I always wondered. I always wanted to read it, but I haven't. You and haven't. I, I don't know what, what does Confederacy of Dunces mean? Well, um, this is the the, uh, the person that's writing, that's in the, the hero of the book, considers everyone dunces. And it's just a confederacy of dunces. All of us. And he's <laughs> the one that knows just about everything there is to know. But it's you know, it really is interesting, and uh, again, there's only about two or three people <laughs> that <laughs> like this book. But I have it, and I read it every once in a while. It's really quite good. Yeah. Confederacy of Dunces Confederacy and, by and Tool, I think, is late. Tool. I don't have this. Oh, tool, okay. Yeah. I, oh, we have it in the library. You and I were looking at it. Right. You were even looking at the recorded book for a yes, while. Yes, yeah. How was that? That's, that's not as good as the book. I really like the book better okay. than listening to it. Well, we'll have to catch up on that one, right. get you back to talking yeah. about it. Um, Undaunted Courage is uh, certainly a classic. I was out in Oregon recently at the head of the Columbia River oh, wow. when they went right out to the, Lewis and Clark went mm. right out to the end there. I just felt like I was with them when oh. I looked out at the mouth yeah. of that river. You know, yeah, it was good. And, and the diaries that he kept were just wonderful. Yeah. Well. And um, I know that uh, Prince of Tides, when, when I asked you uh, what else you like to read, you mentioned Prince of Tides being a lot like it is. this. This is a, mm -hmm. for people who like the large, complex stories with uh, excellent character development. Most, with mostly very yeah. uh, good stories about the interactions between yes. mothers and fathers yeah. and children. Yeah. Well, we're at the end. Yes. We can well, hear the music. Yes, I thought it was. I'd much wasn't. rather be doing flower arranging. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, but I, I thank you very much well, for coming and uh, sharing some of those titles with us. And as I mentioned to you, not everyone would tackle Poisonwood Bible. It is a it's yeah. probably going to be one of our lasting contributions to I literature, so. our meaning yeah. our era. And um, I think so. And it's it's certainly worth. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a movie of this mm -hmm. one one mm -hmm. day when some brave screenwriter. Right. Yeah. But I'm glad you gave me that new title.